This is Will of Billy the Brick Cosplay, and welcome to my first video. In this video, I'm going to be doing a little bit of cold casting experimentation using SmoothOn's uh, SmoothCast 325 resin, along with the their aluminum powder and also Cast Magic Silver Bullet. So, one thing that's really important with cold casting and using these metallic powders is safety. So make sure you have gloves and a respirator. So the first thing I'm going to do is use the cast magic. And what you do is you just lightly brush that right into your mold. Um, so I'm going to brush that into a couple of these. What I'm what I'm doing a test of here is some Voltron legendary defender coins that I'm planning on making as a set. And I want them to look metallic. So I'm not sure what's going to turn out better, the cast magic or just using the aluminum powder. So I'm going to go and I'm going to do half the mold with the cast magic, just a light brushing, making sure you get everything all nice and coated uh, in your mold and, and making sure not to make too much of a mess, but you probably will make a mess. So I'm gonna do about four of these and you'll see as I start, because I start making a mess, I'm gonna grab a note card and cover up the rest of my mold so I don't get it too all over the place. Uh, and I'm just gonna finish coating these four coins with the cast magic um, again, this is the silver bullet, which I thought was the one that would give me the best kind of coin metallic look, uh, but we'll see how it, how it turns out at the end. So once you're done doing that, you want to kind of clean up and tap out your mold. So my mold kind of stuck to the foil here a little bit, but I fold the note card in half. That way it'll be easier to pour that back into the container when I'm done. And I use the brush and just kick out all the little extra onto the note card. Tap it a little bit there to get out any extra once it looks good. Uh, maybe a little bit more brushing. And once all that extra is all out of the mold, you don't want any clumps or anything because that'll inhibit curing and uh, make your make your casting not so great. Uh, dump that back into your container. And one thing you'll notice is I do a lot of cleaning <laughs> while I work because I don't like a mess. Um, but, you know, especially with the powders and stuff, I just don't want to kick them up in the air and everything up. So for the uh, test with Cast Magic, I am just going to use Smooth Cast 300 that I already had uh, left over. Uh, it's pretty easy to use, just like most of the, uh, all of the uh, Smooth Cast is just one to one, A to B. So I'm going to measure out equal parts of A and B. Then using the uh, So Strong Pigments, I'm going to take a little bit of the black. It's recommended to use black with the metallic to, to really make the metal stand out. So stir that up, put a couple of drips into the B of your resin, um, and mix that into your B side before you mix the two together. You want it to get nice and mixed up so you don't have pigment settling out or anything or, or have uneven color, coloring on your finished cast. So once that's all mixed, pour those together into a new cup and mix thoroughly. I like to use popsicle sticks, especially for these little ones. Um, make sure you scrape the side, get everything in there, mix it all around nice and good. I usually mix right until I kind of feel the reaction kick in and the cup start to heat. Um, just a nice, easy pour into the, the four cups with Cast Magic. I had some resin left over after I filled those all up, so I decided to go ahead and fill up two more just so I could see what the tinted Smooth Cast 300 would look like um, without the Cast Magic as a comparison. Um, a little bit of tapping on the mold just to kick out any, any little air bubbles. And I still had some more left, so I grabbed a mold that I had laying around, um, which is my junk mold for my Rebel jewelry that I, I'm working on. Um, poured some of that in there and uh, a little bit more tapping to get the air bubbles out and a little bit of tapping on the for the rebel symbol it didn't quite fill everything and it was starting to kick but i figured what the heck since it's just a test i smeared around with my fingers and with that done i took off my gloves and cleaned up i didn't want to contaminate the second test with anything from the first test so new gloves before i got into the aluminum powder so when doing cold casting with the powders, it's a little bit different. Um, 
for something this small, like the coins that I'm making, I'm not doing a um, outer coat and an, and an inner casting. Um, but on something bigger, you would want to do just a, a thin outer shell the way that I'm doing these coins and then kind of backfill with like a smooth cast 325 um, just so you're not using metal powder for the whole thing. But these are so small, so I figured it wouldn't really hurt anything to just do the whole thing that way. Um, besides, they're so small, it would be really hard to just coat the outside and then still backfill it with 325. So when you're doing the cold casting like this, um, Smooth On recommends using Smooth Cast 325. Um, it's same thing, one part A, one part B, uh, but then you want to do one part of the metal of the metal powder. Um, so I measured that out with a little spoon. I had my A, my B that I tinted with the So Strong again. Uh, once you have all three parts all measured out nicely, it's a little bit harder to measure out the powder than to pour the, the resin, uh, but once you have all three parts measured out, what you want to do is um, you're going to get a, a, a clean measuring cup. You're going to pour your A and B in together and mix those first. Um, and then once those are mixed, then you want to pour in the metal powder and mix all three together. So you got it. And you want to, again, mix all three together really good. Get it all nice and, and even because you don't want clumps of the metal powder or anything else. Once you have it all mixed up really good, pour it just like anything else. It's going to be a little bit thicker uh, than, than normal plain smooth cast, um, but you should be able to pour it pretty normally. Pour it, you know, so that I, I took and I did the other the other half of the mold with that mixture. It filled in pretty nicely on the mold, even though it was a little bit thicker than the other the other resin. A little tapping on the mold to make sure there weren't any air bubbles or to try to get out as many as I could. Made sure everything was filled all the way tap it next time i think i'm gonna do it on a plastic sheet or something so i can i can use some sort of vibration tool like my sander to get the bubbles out um, always take notes so i should have done this earlier but i did it as soon as i finished I, I i took notes on how much of each thing i used how much color how what the volume was to do a you know a set of coins all that stuff so i had that down for later once that was all done cleaned everything up I put the brush from the Cast Magic in a bag. That way I wouldn't get any stray powder anywhere. And then on the bag I wrote, uh, that was a chip brush, I wrote which powder I had used it for. That way that brush is now and forever the Cast Magic Silver Bullet Brush. One thing that's important to note is that when using the Cast Magic or the powders, your resin cure time does extend a little bit. So I waited about 20 minutes and then came back to check it. New gloves, of course. And the Cold, the um, the cast magic with the smooth cast 300 was was all cured. So I popped those out. Those first two didn't really have any powder on them, but I just wanted to get those as a comparison. And the four cast magic ones really shiny. Um, once I get everything out, uh, I'll do a comparison of all of them up close. Uh, you can see they're they're pretty dang shiny. Um, little fake looking for my taste. So then I checked the other ones and they weren't quite ready yet. So I waited about another 30 minutes. The the uh, the resin wasn't still quite cured all the way. It was about 95% cured. So I figured I would go ahead and just pop them out. I get impatient sometimes. Uh, I'd go ahead and pop them out and just lay those out. That way uh, I knew it wasn't going to hurt anything because they were so close to being all the way cured. That way I could look at them and, and check them out. They were a uh, dark gray, pretty dull and flat looking, not metallic at all compared to the cast magic ones, which were super metallic and shiny looking. Um, but that's to be expected when you're when you're doing cold casting with the metallic powders until you do the, the finish work the, it doesn't really bring out the metallicness of them. So I'm going to pop all these out and then I'm going to let them cure overnight. And then tomorrow uh, I'll finish them up and, and do some close up work so you can see those. So to finish a cold cast like this, what you want to do is get yourself some mineral spirits. Um, just put it on a paper towel or something and wipe down the surface of your of your casting. Um, it helps soften up the, the resin a little bit so that the buffing works better. So you want to take some still wool and just go to town on your casting. Um, I'll come back and, and show a better close-up in a second, but I just went to town on that thing for about 10 minutes. Um, you don't have to be gentle. Just rub 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 uh, as hard as you can and you'll see on the right there 
that is a raw casting um, and on the left that was the uh, now I switch sides on you on the right there that's the one that I was just buffing uh, with the steel wool so you can see the raw casting um, before buffing just looks like a flat dark gray and it's gray because I, I use the the so strong pigment and then that's the the buffed one I want it to be a little bit more metallic so more still wool more 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 scratch 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 buff 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 um, you really can't do an, too much especially if it's throughout uh, you're not gonna have to worry about getting through the metallic and into raw resin um, so here you can see again this is the raw casting unbuffed on the right on the left is the the buffed metallic and then that lighter gray one was the one with the cast magic um, so you can kind of see the, the difference between all three of those so to finish off the coin, I took a page out of uh, Bill Duran from Punish Props Weathering Techniques, and I just broke out my generic acrylic paints, got some black, squirted it on a paper towel, and just smeared it all around on there. Want to get in all the nooks and crannies. Uh, you really want to get all that in there so you have a real pop to the relief on the coin. They were, Smooth On recommends using like shoe polish, but I figured I had the acrylics, I just used that. So smeared that all around there, made sure I got everything, made sure I didn't get anything on kind of the top, wiped it off uh, a little bit once it had dried, and there's the finished coin. And then for comparison, again, there's the cast magic and then a raw casting. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, let me know. If you have any comments or suggestions, let me know that too. And if you're enjoying it, check out my Patreon or my prop shop.